but it's pretty clear that OpenAI is focused on profit and capturing the market, either through regulation or through partnerships or through any means necessary. So it's pretty clear that OpenAI is not on the path of for humanity. Welcome to season two of Practical AI, everybody. My name is Jeff and I'm with Peter Lin. We are sponsored today by Pocket AI. Pocket AI is a tool used to perform surgery on your models to make them better. While everyone today is talking about rag and refinement, Pocket AI allows you to edit the weights in your model directly. Peter, um, we had some news either yesterday or today about Ilya Sis... Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. How do you say it? Ilya... Ilya Siskiver. Siskiver. Um, Ilya, of course, was part of the... <laughs> Part of the coup attempt over at OpenAI, he uh, was aligned with the people that were trying to get uh, Sam Altman out, and they voted him out. Uh, I think he was a board member, and then uh, that backfired because Sam came back, and then uh, Ilya was kind of um, on an island um, politically over there. Um, it's my understanding that, um, and we've done a we've done an episode on Ilya that uh, he was kind of behind um, some of the alignment stuff, right? That was kind of his claim to fame? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's, he uh, has been a researcher for many years, for over a decade. And um, he famously studied with uh, Jeff Hinton, one of the three godfathers, and has worked at pretty much all the big places. And Really, when the Transformer paper came out from Google, he and several people realized that, oh, wait a minute, like Transformers can do more. We scale this out, it'll be interesting. And so he was one of the earlier people. There's probably a handful of people that like really thought, okay, we could scale this up and see what happens. Okay. And so, you know, he, he ends up leaving um, OpenAI recently, disappeared. Uh, rumors were that anywhere from he's going off to do something in alignment to he's his career is over. Uh, he kind of surfaced um, with this concept uh, acronym SSI or safe super intelligence. So give us your, um, give us your kind of two minutes or a high level on what is safe super intelligence? What is Ilya up to and kind of how does it relate to um, AGI or artificial general intelligence. So I think no one actually knows what SSI is up to other than the people that are part of it. But I think if we talk about AGI, general intelligence and SI, super intelligence, it's important to think about like, how do you actually define it? Because for many years, the, the, the test for AI was the Turing test, which was basically, can you fool a bunch of people into thinking that a chatbot and a human are the same. But that was actually proven to be easy to, to beat like over a decade ago. Like people wrote really clever chatbots that could actually fake, fake out like 20, 30 people, All right? So Turing test is actually not a great test for measuring whether or not you have a artificial general intelligence, which is why this, this term came about because it used to be like the thinking machine became like AI, but now the term is AGI, that it, it can do generally the things the human could do. And then this safe super intelligence is, has the implication that it's another level of intelligence than general intelligence? Yeah, so, so the idea in tech is that like, once something achieves a certain level, it tends to go exponentially faster, right? So if we look at technology over the last 400 years, like we went from pretty primitive technology, like, you know, we had black powder, we had guns, we had cannons. And then from 1900s to now, we went from that to atomic bombs, to processors that are four and five nanometers for the transistors, right? So like in a hundred years, years technology went exponentially up so it's the same idea that once we get agi 
that's going to cause this curve of progress to jump up exponentially. Do you think that Ilya is concerned with where Sam Altman is going <clears throat> with his sort of non-open project? Open AI is not really open. It's not really it's not really <laughs> yeah it's it's um it's basically for profit or becoming for profit it's not really open source um but are you thinking that Ilya is kind of on the good side of future history and he's going to kind of oppose this behemoth or are you skeptical that anyone that puts the word safe in front of something is actually up to something else well, so I mean, I don't know him, so I can't I can't speak for him or about him. Um, but it's pretty clear that OpenAI is focused on profit and capturing the market, either through regulation or through partnerships or through any means necessary. So it's pretty clear that OpenAI is not on the path of for humanity. Um, but then again, like it's kind of hard to build this stuff without a huge bank account and multiple data centers. So it's kind of because of the approach they've taken to build the technology, they need a huge war chest and they need access to things. In one of the videos I saw, um, it said that the real winner in this is NVIDIA because now there's going to be another behemoth, another Anthropic, another OpenAI, another Microsoft player. You think Ilya has the has the ability to um, garner that much um, respect and attention to raise that much money to be another sort of anchor in this in this space? I mean, I don't know, but if we look at the history of Silicon Valley, that tends to happen where personalities that are well known can kind of end up getting a lot more resources than someone that's equally as smart but doesn't have a name. And then what's what's after super intelligence? Is there like Star Trek intelligence? Is there like well, no like, one know. Are people just making stuff up at this point? I guess is what I'm asking. Well I mean it's all kind of made up. Like like AGI is is kind of a fluffy non-description of what I mean like if you look at all the videos and articles no one really defines what artificial general intelligence means other than it's generally equivalent to a human being but like that means nothing like in what terms like in terms of playing soccer in terms of shooting at basketball <laughs> in terms of cooking you a delicious meal or cleaning your house. Right. Like, you have to define what that general thing means and no one has a definition. And even if someone were to create a chatbot that like for 90% of the people gives you a good conversation, you, you, you could define that as an artificial general intelligence. You could. But is it going to be useful to you for doing work? Well, depends on what your work is. Okay. So just by nature of the lack of benchmarks or or things are kind of arbitrary at this point in terms of yeah. what what is that thing? Okay. Well, where do you think this goes? What's what's um What's this going to look like, this whole SSI, AGI, OpenAI, ILIA? What's this going to look like, your guess, two, two years out? Two years out? Well, I mean, I think already this year, machine learning training is going to consume a significant percent of the U.S. energy production. Hmm. Um, and we already know that data centers are power limited. Right. And so everyone's thinking like, oh, we just we just keep scaling up the hardware. Well, yeah, in theory you can, but there's, there's no infinite power does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> so either 
Yeah. Go ahead. Either you have people not get electricity at home, or you ration power so that only the big players have power, or you need to like find power somehow. It seems to me, Peter, that the the pathway is bigger and bigger and bigger. More and more power, bigger models, more parameters, more data. Now we're doing synthetic data. Um, is it possible that we hit a a wall of some sort? Well, we, we already have. That, that's why Microsoft is building new data centers. That's why Google is building new data centers. That's why um, Cerebras is building a new data center. So all these AI players are building data centers and they're trying to locate it where they can get cheap energy. But let me ask another question then. Um, is it possible that, I know it's possible, but what are your thoughts on there also being just sort of a, a natural barrier that we maybe don't define? And, and what I'm thinking about is I heard uh, Eric Weinstein talk about um, the state of physics and how by 1970 in physics, like we haven't really done anything over the last 50 years that's really new in physics. So for some reason, physics and like the the acad academics of it and the, and the exploration, the innovation in it, it just sort of stopped. It hasn't really progressed that much. Right. What do you, do you, do you think that at some point we're going to hit that as well? Like take resources out of it. But is it possible that yeah. SI and AGI just don't advance because we just, we hit a wall. Well, I mean, there's, there's already a threat of, of tunnel vision. Of everyone's got blinders on to like, well, this is the path we take. And so to really reach AGI and ASI, we need more people doing more crazy, dumb experiments and trying crazy ideas because I really don't think the current transformer can get there. I mean, because they, you, you can't, literally, you can't build a data center in less than 12 months. Yeah. Because, I mean, you have to clear four football fields worth of land. You have to lay the foundation. <laughs> it's got to be close to water because you got to cool it. Yeah. It's got to be close to power because you got to power it. You got to bring fiber optics in. So like all those things take months. Then once you've built the actual physical building, you got to sh ship in all the hardware and you got to hook it all up. And that's a human thing. Like that's, that's data center engineers going in and setting up thousands upon thousands of servers and plugging cables in and like configuring all of that. It doesn't, it doesn't just magically happen. Last question. Um, is it possible to hit AGI or SSI without interpretability and cracking the weights, getting to, getting to know what the weights are actually doing? I don't know. My guess is no, but there's lots of people in the Transformer camp that think yes, but no one really knows. So one possible uh, scenario is that there's a fork there's the transformer crew that's going bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's the parameter weights crew that's going to go inward and look at what the weights are doing and possibly get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not sustainable unless you start like, you know, building data centers in outer space with huge solar arrays. <laughs> 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 I'm going to put my um, data center either in Siberia or Alaska, really close to oil. And it's going to have open windows so that it can be cooled off in the Siberian winter. That's what that's going to be my data center. Yeah. With big one big fiber optic cable going somewhere, maybe to around the world. Yeah. <laughs> It'll take a few years. Should be luck. <laughs> Peter, thanks. Good talk. Um, we look forward to any questions on this topic, and we're all anxious to see what Ilya is up to. You can check out his simple website, uh, which we'll leave uh, in the in the discussion box. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ask us questions, and we'll get back to you with more topics. Take care, everybody. Oh.